Hey, it's Chris Fravel from The Droning Company here today with our friends from Brink Drones. Gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves, telling everybody what you do at Brink, and uh, then we can get into the logistics of you know, the drone and your company and what your missions are. Sure. Uh, hi there, I'm Will Hudler. I'm the VP of Public Safety Operations for Brink Drones. And my name is Brett Conda. I'm the uh, VP of Sales and Marketing at Brink. Okay, excellent. Now you've got a very unique drone solution here. I mean, I was watching the demo video that you have on there, and it looks like it breaks glass. You know, it, it's a security drone, is that correct? Tactical. tactical. Yeah, so it's an indoor tactical. It's built to fly indoors. Okay. It's built to help law enforcement and tactical teams basically clear and search structures before you have to send in people. Okay, excellent. That's very cool. Now, th it's an interesting concept. What What is the idea behind this drone? What, what inspired the, the idea? So essentially, the, the reason why we've had such such a great market fit from the beginning is because this drone was designed by tactical operators. Um, it, it was their input that drove the engineering. Our CEO, Blake Resnick, was the original engineer with the company and the founder. So he took, he witnessed our problems firsthand, took the input from the end users and developed the solution. And that's what we have here. So essentially this, this drone is, it, it's, it's, it has been and in, in turned into uh, the, the probably the, the most suitable solution in terms of like an integrated solution for tactical teams that have to make entry into a confined space. Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Now, in terms of the, the readout and the, the image readout, the, the display that you have, does it have options for like thermal? I know that would be very useful, especially in like nighttime operations. So we use an analog video feed because for us, we don't want the pilot in command to be near a dangerous area. We want them to be in the armored vehicle. We want them to be a block away in their truck. And analog's better at penetrating material versus digital. So we have a wide angle fixed length camera, and then we have built in night vision. So thermal is something we're looking at, but frankly, in our use case, night vision is actually more effective in the type of environments that our customers go into than thermal imaging. But we understand there's a big need for, for thermal, and we're, we're trending in that direction, but uh, night vision is what we currently have on board. That's right. And night vision is, is essentially a high frequency use case for um, for all tactical teams because it's, it's not like an assailant will leave the lights on right. for the team when they show up. And and many American police departments do not have the um, the support to purchase either politically to, to purchase night vision or the means to do so. Night vision is very expensive. I know for us here in Las Vegas, the, the night vision on the lemur was the very first time we could see in the dark. Yeah. Which, I mean, you think about the nature of that situation and you almost certainly need something that helps to enhance that vision in, in low light conditions for sure. Right. Right. Now, in terms of a, a, a charge and the reliability of how long this can stay in the air, I mean, how long is this built to last in terms of battery life? Yeah, certainly. So so the initial iteration of the lemur was much lighter than what we have now. We, we, we have a 31 minute flight time on the completely stripped down model. Right now, we, we offer a LiDAR package. We, we, our engineering team has redesigned the hood. We've, we've integrated some additional speakers. We've added 4G, so it's heavier. Um, but we're getting anywhere between 23 to 25 minutes on manual flight. And on LiDAR flight, we're getting 18 to 23 minutes. That's and, and, fantastic. Yeah, and so the LiDAR, the pilot assist, has really changed, um, has, has, has changed uh, the, uh, the adoption of the lemur, because now you don't necessarily need to be an expert FPV pilot to fly this to fly this airframe. Yeah, and it also has a 10 hour perch time. So if there's a long barricade or a long mission, you can land the drone, kill the motors, and sit there with eyes and ears for up to about 10 hours. That, that's, that's amazing. That's valuable. Yeah, that is awesome. Now, there's been one thing that I've seen on that rolling video screen that you have back on your display there, and it's it's the device that is used to breach the window. I mean, that that is such a cool concept. I'd like to hear more about that. that tool. That'd be awesome, yeah. I'd like to learn a little bit more about how that tool works, and yeah. as well as the fallout afterwards. I mean, in the video itself, you see the drone sort of tumble to the ground after that. Mm -hmm. how, do, how does that recover then at that yeah. point? So, so ideally, the drone doesn't crash after the, the glass break. Okay. And so in our training, we have have a comprehensive training course it's post certified and we teach our operators how to um, efficiently break glass breach glass with the with the lemur and the glass breaker accessory and so that you don't have a crash the, the great thing is this drone was built for SWAT teams so it's built to crash just as much as it's built to fly so it can certainly ride itself in turtle mode it's just a, a, a easy flip of the switch from uh, you know either manual lidar or turtle you just flip the switch over and you can operate the drone that way and flip it back over if if you do have a crash whether you're breaking glass you're pushing open a door because remember our drone is durable and it's powerful so oftentimes SWAT teams will use our our drone to push doors open as long as they're knobbed it can push open a hollow core interior door oh wow that's, that's right very cool. that's very cool. about and the then breaker. this is a glass breaker I don't know if you can zoom in but basically this is a tungsten carbide tip so second hardest material on earth 
spins up to about 3,000 RPM, you just touch glass and it shatters. And so if you're going into like a hurricane glass type of situation or triple pane glass, it'll be a combination of this and then just using the drone as a battering ram and going right through it. That so is, that's incredible. This is a very unique kind of capability because oftentimes on second stories or hard to reach places, they have a tough time breaching the glass. And with this, you can just fly up and, and go. Um, so it's it, this is definitely a unique capability that, that we have. Yeah, and it's, it's a risk mitigator, right? So, I mean, every time you send a human being up to danger, you have a you have a, a higher likelihood of having an undesirable outcome like a gunfight, right? So you don't want to have to do that. And this, this allows a team, because alternatively what you do is, there's some teams that use energetic breaching. They'll put an explosive on the window or, or they'll use ballistic breaching. And so imagine the sound of gunfire to, to break glass, like safety glass, like a backslider, mm -hmm. with an armed assailant inside the home, or, or a hostage taker. Yeah. That, the, 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 the sound of the ballistic window breach could precipitate an adverse reaction by your assailant, especially if there are hostages. So this allows us, it gives teams another tool. And remember, you know, the, the value of the lemur, it's, it's great to be able to breach, it's great to be able to fly inside, but the 1080p evidence, the, you know, the video evidence is high def, even though we have an analog feed. Mm -hmm. That evidence is priceless. And the situational awareness is what what communities are 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 um, requiring and what they deserve. Quite frankly, they deserve for the tactical commanders and the incident commanders to make evidence-based decisions. And when you have eyes and ears, and you can have two-way two-way communication with your assailant or anyone who's trapped in there, and in whatever the confined space is, you, you're able to gather situational awareness, make evidence-based decisions, and you know. And the goal is always to save life. So. It sounds like this drone will be very proficient at that. Now, is this on market now? People can, the police departments can purchase it? Absolutely, yeah. So we, we launched this product a little over a year and a half ago. Um, so, and that's about how old of a company we are as well. Um, and now there's about 258 agencies around the world using the product. That's, that's incredible um, so growth. We, we demo a lot. Uh, Will's team uh, goes out around the country and the world, provides demos, because we understand that our customers need to see this to, to believe it. Uh, we do about 15 demos a week um, around the country and trying to get in front of as many law enforcement agencies and SWAT teams as we possibly can. That's excellent. That, that's, that growth is an amazing scale. I have one more question left for you. Both of you can answer it, one of you, whatever. If you had any advice to give to a drone pilot that's trying to get into the commercial industry, whether they're in law enforcement, whether they're in search and rescue, EMT, whatever the case may be, what would that be? What would you tell them if they were trying to get into the commercial drone field? Well, first, are you sure? <laughs> right? Do you want to take that plan? Yeah, sure. Because I mean, you know, I'll, I'll touch on this a bit, but Brett has more nuanced knowledge here. I, it's you know, it really is the wild, wild west, and you know, you can go from one city to the next, and it depends on you know your, the the political climate, and and even and even the you know the the constituents in that area whether or not they're open to UAS technology flying over their homes. But the truth of the matter is, drones can be leveraged to fight crime and to make communities safer. So I would just say, okay, great, you've made that decision. Do your research. You know, take a look at um, uh, working groups like drone responders for, to identify best practice. And then also understand this, and, th and this is what we see when we travel around agencies and meet with them when we talk about lemur adoption, is new program coordinators always want to find one drone that is the Swiss Army knife that can do every single job, and it's just not the case. You know, and, and in police work and public safety, we have specialties and subspecialties. Like, you know, for, for an Overwatch officer that uses a, a special purpose rifle, the special purpose rifle is for a specific use case, and drones are no different. So, uh, like, for example, the lemur is for confined space, right? So be open to looking at the best tool for the, for the job, and I would, yeah. I would say, you know, if you're a pilot wanting to get into this industry, I would focus far less on the piloting aspect of this because us as a manufacturer and the industry as a whole all of our goals is to make it as easy to fly as possible. As autonomous as possible, reducing the barrier to entry means a bigger market. And so we're not going backwards and saying, hey, we want you to have full control and really be good at flying. That's not the way this is going. My suggestion would be to focus on the data. So pick kind of a specific thing that you're interested, whether that be mapping, whether that be remote sensing, whether that be flight controllers, like hone in on a specific part of the ecosystem um, because if you are coming in and saying, hey, I just want to fly drones, that's got a shelf life yeah. to it because this is going to be very, very autonomous. But 
be an expert in thermal, be an expert in LIDAR, be an expert in GIS, be an expert in, in these different types of fields, because that's what's, at the end of the day, that's what the customer cares about. They don't care that we have a drone. They care that they can now hear, and they care that that video and that night vision is going back to command so they know what's going on. If it was on a pole, they'd buy it on a pole. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It's what, it's what the drone is carrying and the data that's coming from it that actually matters in this game. Yeah. And so, so one more piece on that. When you're identifying hardware or software that you're going to try to integrate, ensure that there's an infrastructure with that, that provider that will, that will give you follow-up service. And that's, you know, that's one commitment. Um, so here's a shameless brink plug. One commitment we've made is to support our end users. We have a regional team. We have nine folks around the United States set to respond at a moment's notice to assist our customers in the field. Okay. So ensure that when you're doing that, you, you might have a great solution, but what happens when it goes wrong? Because if there's one thing you know in public safety is technology breaks yeah. or you know has bugs, right? So what happens in the middle of the night when you need help? Yeah. So take a look at that as well. That's, that's excellent input. Now, last thing. They want to find more out about Brink Drones, um, social media, website, where, where should people go? Absolutely, so our, our website is www.brinkdrones.com and then all of our tags on social are at Brink Drones. Excellent, that's yep. easy enough. Yep. Hey, thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank really appreciate your time. Thank yeah, you so much. The Droning Company is a job agency for drone pilots which also incorporates a high-end magazine about the industry. So people search this when they're looking for a drone pilot. They talk to the pilot directly, but either via email or phone. We're not involved, we don't take commissions. Never will have, never will.